Hey, I'm estate planning attorney Paul Rabelais, and in this video, we're going to talk about part two of my three part series on the 2020 updates to the estate and gift tax. All right, so let me just go right to it, and then I'm going to take a deeper dive into it that you're not going to want to miss. So, in 2019, the some people call it the estate tax exemption or the basic exclusion amount. For 2019, that number was $11.4 million. It gets adjusted for inflation, so in 2020, it will be $11.58 million. So if you multiply that number by two with a married couple, it comes to $23.16 million that married couples potentially can exempt from the federal, you know, the 40% federal estate tax. Okay, let's, let's dig a lot deeper than that. In part one of my three-part series, we talked about the what is now the $15,000 present interest annual exclusion. What that means is if, is if you can give $15,000 to as many people as you want to every year with no tax consequences. But if you give more to any one person, um, more than $15,000 to any one person in any one calendar year, you start using some of your $11.58 million estate tax exemption. So if you gave, if, if next year you give $115,000 to your son, the first $15,000 doesn't count. But instead of when you die being able to leave $11.58 million free of the 40% estate tax, you could leave $11.48 million free of the federal uh, estate tax. So go back to part one if you want to learn more about the $15,000 present interest annual exclusion. Okay. And then in part three, a really important one that I'm going to go over in my next video, we'll talk about how on January 1st, 2026, the basic exclusion amount reverts from $10 million adjusted for inflation, which is $11.58 million now. And it, the exclusion amount reverts back to $5 million adjusted for inflation. We don't know what that number will be in 2026. So there's a lot of, of consequences as a result of that. We'll go over all, all of that in part three. All right, so let me get this straight at the outset. The, the federal estate tax, it doesn't affect most people. Um, it doesn't affect anywhere close to most people. There's, um, I don't try to get into it too much, but maybe it affects, you know, probably less than 1% of the United States population, maybe far less than 1% of the United States population. However, when it affects uh, an estate or a family, it affects them in a big way. It's a 40% tax, and quite frankly, uh, you know, I was going through before I made this video trying to think of all of, you know, my clients who, um, this tax has affected or will affect in the future all of those people or families that I've, I've uh, helped try to minimize or avoid the estate tax. You know, they all, they all worked very hard to, to build that estate. They either, you know, went to school for a very long time and studied hard and became a professional or they went out in business and they took risks and they worked their butts off. Many of them sacrificed a lot of family time. And so they went through, you know, uh, many, many decades of very hard work to, to build up and save. And, and because they worked so hard, they don't want to just give 40% of it to the government. So I, I get it. Um, and so when, when it affects people, um, they, they really want to try to preserve that business for their family, that land for their family, those savings for their family, for their children, for their grandchildren. Perhaps they're thinking they don't want their children and grandchildren to have to suffer as much as they did to, you know, to build what they built. Okay, so that's, that's what many of them are thinking. But nonetheless, when it, uh, there's, some, there's some key areas that are worth mentioning in this video um, that uh, are, are really important. So I'm going to mention two things that are really important. One's called portability and the other is called QTIP. All right, let's talk about portability. And, and I'm mentioning this because five years is or six years is going to come like that. And what people are doing now is going to affect, you know, how much tax their family will pay when they die six, 10, 20, 25 years in the future. So Portability is, um, I don't know how old it is, maybe maybe seven or eight years old now. Um, 
So what portability is, it's, it affects married couples. And let me just give you an example. Let's say a husband dies next year when the exclusion amount is 11.58 million. And he only has, and I say only, but he has a $4 million estate. So nowhere close to having to pay any of the 40% estate tax. However, he did have, um, he had 4 million, exclusion amount 11.58. He had $7.58 million of unused exclusion amount. Didn't use it. So there's, there's no estate tax return filing requirement after dad dies because he, he didn't have a gross estate that exceeded 11.58 million. However, the executor of dad's estate, maybe it's mom, maybe it's somebody else, um, it may make a lot of sense for her to file that estate tax return timely within nine months of dad's death so that she can make what's called the portability election so that that $7.58 million of unused exclusion amount, it can be added to the wife's exclusion amount to make her exclusion amount much larger. That might be real important and if she dies after January 1st, 2026, when this estate tax uh, exclusion amount reverts you know, back down. So be aware of the portability election. Even be aware of that today. The other thing is this, uh, what's called this Q-tip election. I know Q-tip is a cotton swab. This has nothing to do with that. This is an acronym, Qualified Terminable Interest Property but it's um, arranging your estate now if you're married. And again, you might be saying 11.58 million. <sighs> Let's move on. Let's move on to who's gonna get my guns and uh, mom wants to leave her Tupperware collection to the granddaughter. But um, that estate tax exemption is gonna be cut in half and while your stuff is gonna to continue to grow. So there's a lot of people putting estate planning legal programs in place now, and they're not gonna die uh, for many, many years. And so they need to make sure that um, the potential for taking advantage of what I call the, or what everybody calls the estate tax marital deduction. So what that, does is it means if, if a married person dies and they have more than the applicable estate tax exclusion in the, on the date that they died, estate tax can be completely avoided if in that deceased's estate planning documents they left things a certain way for their surviving spouse. So um, just need to know that that exists. It's um, most people who are, who are signing their wills, their trusts, their estate planning legal documents today, most of those folks are gonna still be around for many years. And with this potential for the estate tax exclusion amount going down, you just need to, to be aware that while there's no chance uh, that if in 2020 you die, no way you're gonna have 11.58 million your stuff may gradually grow over time and that exclusion amount is gonna be slashed in the future, assuming Congress and the president take no action. And as of right now, they ain't taking no action on anything. So um, be aware of that. All right, now I broke all of these 2020 updates on the estate and gift tax into three different parts. This is part two. And I had so much to say, I had to break it up into three parts because uh, very recently, final regulations were issued by the Department of Treasury regarding the effect of this um, estate tax exclusion amount reverting on January 1st, 2026 from $10 million adjusted for inflation, which is in 2020, 11.58 million, on January 1st, 2026, it will revert back to $5 million adjusted for inflation. We don't know what that number will be in 2026, but maybe it'll be maybe around $6 million or so, who knows. And, and there's, some, there's some key points on those uh, final regulations that were just issued um, really days or a couple of weeks ago, I don't know the exact date, 
that I'm going to go over all that uh, tomorrow or in the next video, uh, part three of our three-part series on the 2020 Federal Estate and Gift Tax. So you're going to want to make sure that that's, you know, that's a can't miss video. Um, you're not going to want to miss it. Okay, so there you have it. Estate tax exclusion amount, 2019, 11.4 million. 2020, 11.58 million. If married couples get it right, they can exempt up to 23.16 million if they both die in 2020, unlikely. But we got some changes uh, right down the pipe and I'll go over some details about that in my next video. Okay, so I hope that helps really be fantastic if you could punch that subscribe button on my YouTube channel. And if you felt like this provided, provided you with some value, give it the thumbs up. And then some comments below. Always like to see a little activity and a little comment activity going on. Um, so feel free to contribute that way. I'm Estate Planning Paul Rabelais. Y'all have a great day. Take care.